Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday in Lent. Weather permitting, brief outdoor services of Holy Communion are held each Sunday at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. in the parking lot. To make reservations for those services, please go to holytrinitylynchburg.org or contact the church office. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship during the prelude. continue with the order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God of steadfast love, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have wandered from your ways. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to forgive those who have sinned against us. Have mercy on us, create in us new hearts, and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, His disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This week marks the one-year anniversary of our last indoor, in-person Sunday worship services at Holy Trinity. It was Sunday, March 8, 2020, the first day of the week in which the emerging coronavirus pandemic began to disrupt our daily lives in so many ways. Our world changed dramatically, and our vocabularies expanded. Words and phrases like stay at home, safer at home, personal protective equipment, physical distancing, social distancing, positivity rate, comorbidities, to name only a few. With each passing day and then week, And then month, we came to realize that life going forward would not be business as usual. Business as usual, however, describes the scene in our gospel reading this morning. It is business as usual the day Jesus of Nazareth shows up at the temple in Jerusalem. In the pre-Passover hustle and bustle, animals are being bought and sold. Coins are being exchanged. All the usual people are in their usual places and usual roles. While one traditional interpretation of this text emphasizes Jesus' anger as he scatters animals, overturns tables, and cleanses the temple, This story is about more than the animal merchants and money changers. After all, Jesus has grown up as a faithful Jew going to the temple. He doesn't show up this day and all of a sudden say, Wow, there are animals and money changers here. I didn't know this. This is wrong. 
The marketplace had been there for a long time. That's how the system worked. It was business as usual. So pilgrims coming to Jerusalem from all over could purchase animals for sacrifice and exchange their foreign currency for silver shekels in order to pay their temple tribute. Yet, Jesus' trip to the temple that day is different and confusing. When he seems to tell people that he will raise up in three days a destroyed temple that has taken 46 years to construct, they don't have a clue what he's talking about. But as the gospel writer states, he was speaking of the temple of his body. They don't understand because they are about business as usual that day. A normal that Jesus has come to throw out and overturn. The animals and the money changers are not the problem. They are symptoms of something deeper going on. The problem is not so much in the temple as it is in the human heart. We, too, know about business as usual in our daily lives. Sometimes life can become mechanical, just going through the motions because of fear. In the face of uncertainty, we want some type of security and predictability, so we keep doing the same old things. Sometimes it is related to sorrow or grief, because something has been lost or someone has died. We can't get back the life we want, so we cling to business as usual. Other times, we are so busy and worn out making a living that life turns into one task after another. Maybe we've taken people, relationships, and things for granted. Maybe we've lost our sense of gratitude, wonder, and mystery. There are countless reasons and ways in which we fall into the business as usual because we forget that we are temples of God's presence in the world. We forget that all of creation is the residence of God. We forget that the love of God is gazing upon us from whatever direction we may turn. This forgetfulness is what happened in first century Jerusalem. The people didn't see themselves or one another as true temples of God. It was all about the human-built temple, the animals, and the coins. They had forgotten that God was more interested in them than in their festivals, that God wanted them more than their offerings. Life can easily become a series of transactions when we forget that we are temples of God. Relationships and intimacy are lost. Priorities get rearranged in harmful ways. Making a living replaces living a life. Accumulation of wealth and power displaces generosity and servanthood. Life becomes a marketplace rather than a place for encountering the holy in ourselves and one another. That's the business as usual that our Lord comes to cleanse. In the Gospel according to John, unlike in the three synoptic Gospels, the cleansing of the temple happens at the very beginning of the Jesus story. The Word became flesh, Water became wine, and now the temple is becoming human, and this is only the beginning. 
Throughout the rest of the fourth gospel, Jesus will be interrupting business as usual. Remember the Samaritan woman at the well? Jesus recognizes her as a temple of God. Remember the man who has been paralyzed for 38 years? Jesus says, stand up, take your mat and walk. Remember the 5,000 people who show up empty and hungry? Two fish and five loaves, and there are 12 baskets of leftovers. Remember Lazarus, dead and in the tomb? Take away the stone, says Jesus. Lazarus, come out. Death will not have the final word. Over and over again, our Lord comes to interrupt, disrupt, overturn, and throw out destructive business as usual thinking and behavior that destroys our ability to see and participate in the love and grace of God that is already present in and among us. The word became flesh so that the temple might become human. Jesus the Christ continues to work in our lives today, turning the world around because there are still Samaritan women at the well, lame people still grounded by business as usual, empty and hungry people still waiting to be fed, dead people still waiting to be made alive. Perhaps today, you may feel as if you are the woman at the well, or the one who is grounded and paralyzed, or the one who is empty and hungry. Maybe you need to be called back to life. Maybe business as usual needs to be interrupted in your life this Lenten season. What tables need to be overturned? What animals need to be driven out? It was only much later, with 2020 post-resurrection hindsight, as the Gospels were written, that Jesus' statement about the temple of his body being raised in three days would make sense. We give thanks that in his death and resurrection, he turns our worlds around, claimed by the word and waters of holy baptism, we are set apart as temples of God's presence in the world, embraced by our Lord's compassion and acceptance we are sent to turn the world's business of, as usual ways with God's unconditional love and grace. Unconditional love and grace for all in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
this third Sunday in Lent, let us pray for the church and for all people in need. God of all, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, renew the faith of your church, that your people place their trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. Guide us that in every situation our words and actions honor your name. Lord, in your mercy. The heavens declare your glory, renew your creation, and inspire our care for all that you have made. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Give us the willingness to repent and change our behavior when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies. Lord, in your mercy, your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislators, judicial systems, and law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Lord, in your mercy. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable Give courage to all who are suffering and help us pour out your healing power on all who are sick. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. Lord, in your mercy. You call us to proclaim Christ crucified. Give us clarity so that we might go beyond our own habits, comfort, and business-as-usual attitudes to follow our Lord more faithfully. Lord, in your mercy. The cross of Christ reveals the power of your love for all the world. We give thanks for all the martyrs whose witness reveals the power of the cross. Give us the same trust in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our service now begins. Marked with the cross of Christ, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>